We should stop people dumping rubbish in the water and making them mom or dad drive them to school and walk to school. Bonjour, je m'appelle Jade, j'ai 5 ans. Il ne faut pas me gaspiller l'eau, arracher les arbres et donner les, les, jou, les joujoux et les vêtements aux, aux enfants qui n'en ont pas. と、Today we will be talking about how to save the planet and we would like to make sure that all the money has been shared equally and everybody has money so that nobody is on the street. For the planet will I, will I recycle and I will schone energy gebruiken. My name's Brian. I live in England, and um, I and I save the planet so the bad guys don't kill us. Takahashi, the hottest young scientist. Oh, here I am. Here I am. I have a lot of flowers. I love them. I love them. To conserve the planet and the and all the environment, I would like my father to stop smoking. Que ma mère aussi et qu'ils arrêtent tous deux de picoler. My name is Iris and I'm seven and I'm from Hong Kong. Um, to save the planet, don't waste money. I probeer de arme mensen genoeg geld en eten te laten krijgen. Me gustaría que el planeta no, que el planeta no estuviera contaminado, haciendo que la que los coches produzcan menos humo. Vivo en Angola y para preservar el planeta no deja, dejaría las lámparas acesas desnecesariamente. Para proteger el planeta, yo podría decir que Les éoliennes, c'est cool parce que ça ne pollue pas, mais ça fait de l'électricité dans les maisons. Il ne faut mettre pas beaucoup d'électricité, sinon ça va polluer un peu. Et puis, si la planète est trop polluée, il euh, y, y a beaucoup de trucs qui risquent de mourir. Donc, il euh, faudrait mieux pas polluer. Mais il y a beaucoup de gens qui polluent. Moi, je retrouve plein de canettes de de Coca-Cola, de trucs comme ça. Thank you for listening to our message.
Kopf. Six. Aha. We have business as well. It took my breath away. I don't know about yours. While um, we're just readjusting the stage. Hello. Good morning. And a very, very warm welcome to this conference on education for sustainable development. Learning today for a sustainable future. The slogan behind me you can see is today for tomorrow but at the risk of getting a crick in the neck we should be looking at yesterday as well I think um, because we're at the end now the culmination of a 10-year cycle uh, a 10 years of a decade of learning for sustainability and there is today a degree of urgency about the next 48 hours because as the UN Secretary General has already pointed out the current model of progress is unsustainable this is what he said exactly sustainable development offers the best chance to adjust our course and I can't think of a better way of opening this conference than to use those words as a guide I'm also personally very happy to be here and to be associated and working once again with UNESCO. I've had several previous uh, engagements with UNESCO in here, in China, uh, in France, and it's always been, for me anyway, a very good experience, and I hope for the next two days you will think the same. Uh, before we close the stage uh, for a second, I just wanted to I thought it was right to say something about those fantastic dancers. Uh, they are the uh, Keoghan artists. Um, Keoghan is a form of medieval popular comedy and one of the four representative theater arts, arts of classic Japan. We've just seen one of the most talented Keoghan performers, Mr. Mansai Nomura, who is a none less than a grand master and he performed a divine dance called Sambasso. Um, Mr. Nomura has very graciously prepared a special performance of the dance uh, for this occasion, the UNESCO uh, World Conference on ESD. The dance basically represents a prayer for bountiful crops and also expresses gratitude and reverence to nature for feeding us. So thank you to the uh, Keoghan artists. Now, 
I've set the stage, or rather these people have set the stage. You've seen the dancers. We've issued the welcome. We are now going to drop the curtain briefly uh, for security reasons while we check the stage. So we'll be back in just a moment. Stay with us. As if by magic, uh, we've completed our security check, uh, and as you can see, we have uh, honoured guests on stage. Um, please welcome uh, Madame uh, Irina Bakova, the Director General of UNESCO, Her Royal Highness Princess Lala Hasna, President of the Mohammed VI Foundation for the Protection of the Environment, and Hideaki Omura, Governor of Aichi Prefecture. Please welcome all. Uh, we do expect the progress uh, of the royal couple, so it is a, a great privilege for me. Uh, I uh, met the uh, Crown Prince last night. I was very fortunate to meet the Crown Prince, and I'm now very privileged to be able to welcome on stage our guests of honour. According to protocol, I would once again remind you to stay seated. It is with great pleasure we welcome their Imperial Highnesses, the Crown Prince and Crown Princess.
And as you saw, they were accompanied by Hakubam Shinomura, Minister of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology. I would now like to welcome to the lectern uh, Madame Irina Bakova, Director General of UNESCO. Imperial Highnesses, the Crown Prince and Crown Princess, Her Royal Highness Princess Lala Hassan of Morocco, President of the Mohammed VI Foundation for the Protection of Environment, Excellency Mr. Hakuban Shinomura, Minister of Education, Culture, Sport, Science and Technology of Japan, Honorable Mr. Hideaki Omura, Governor of Aichi Prefecture, Excellency, ministers, ambassadors, ladies and gentlemen. I am honored to be in Aichi, Nagoya today. This is the culmination of a journey and the beginning of a new one. Let me thank the government of Japan for organizing the UNESCO World Conference on Education for Sustainable Development along with the city of Nagoya and the prefecture of Aichi. I am deeply grateful to His Imperial Highness Crown Princess Naruhito for his leadership and commitment. I thank Her Royal Highness Princess Lala Hasna for the honor of her presence today. I have just come from the city of Okayama where the Minister and I jointly inaugurated the Education for Sustainable Development Youth Forum and witness the tremendous vitality of participants from all over the world. And today, we are in Nagoya. I can hardly think of a better place for us to explore education for sustainable development, a city with a history 2,000 years long, a city of rich culture and cutting-edge industry. Nagoya is often associated with the development of waka poetry, and this reminds of a poet, poem by the Emperor Meiji. It is our hope that all the world's oceans be joined in peace. So why do the winds and waves now rise up in angry rage? I believe we have all come to Nagoya today with the same unity in the face of adversity, sharing the same aspiration for solidarity against contrary winds. The stakes are high. Across the world today, new challenges are emerging that pay no heed to borders or policy lines. There are rising costs of natural disasters. There is the deepening impact of climate change. The planet is under pressure. We are reaching the limits of its boundaries. This is a call for action. An action has been the spirit guiding the United Nations decade on education for sustainable development 2005-2014, sponsored by Japan and led by UNESCO. The core message of the United Nations Decade is one that echoes the opening lines of the UNESCO Constitution. Building the foundations for lasting peace and sustainable development must start in the minds of women and men. And this begins with education. Education is the way to connect the dots between the social, economic, and environmental dimensions of sustainable development. Sustainability requires changes in how we produce and consume. Fundamentally, it requires new ways of seeing the world, new ways of thinking about our responsibilities to each other and the planet, new ways of acting and behaving as global citizens. This is why Education is the bedrock for sustainability because it can shape the new values, 
skills and knowledge we need for the century ahead. We must build green economies. We also need green societies. We must craft green legislation and regulations. We need also green citizens. These ideas have deep roots in Japan, which sponsored and helped drive the United Nations decade for education for sustainable development. And we have come to Nagoya to take stock of 10 years of action. The achievements are there for all to see. More and more governments have integrated education strategies, tools and targets into national sustainable development policies. The mid-decade conference in Bonn, Germany, gave fresh impetus and accelerated this movement. Through the EcoSchools program, more than 14 million students and 1.2 million teachers in 58 countries are engaged in action-oriented learning for sustainable development. In Brazil, the Seeds of Spring initiative reached 13,000 students in the city of Osasco in 2012, making them change agents in their li lives, schools, and communities. Across the world, 550 business schools have signed on to the principles for responsible management education developed by the United Nations Global Compact. Morocco has placed education for sustainable development at the heart of learning and the development of greener schools. I wish to recognize the personal commitment and dynamism of Her Royal Highness Princess Lala Hasna, President of the Mohammed VI Foundation for the Protection of the Environment, which is leading so many groundbreaking initiatives. Madame Ladies and gentlemen, education for sustainable development has acquired international recognition. States underscored its importance during the United Nations Conference on Sustainable Development at Rio de Janeiro in Brazil in 2012. This year, the Open Working Group on Sustainable Development Goals has rightly proposed that education for sustainable development be integrated into the objective proposed for education, that is to say, ensuring quality, inclusive and fair and long li and lifelong education and learning. And this is directly in line with the Muscat Agreement adopted during the UNESCO meeting on education for all in Oman this year. The Samoa Declaration adopted during the third international conference on small island developing states in September of this year, 2014, also reaffirmed the importance of education, of quality education, for sustainable development. The very first UNESCO Institute in Asia, the Mahatma Gandhi Institute for Education, for Peace and Sustainable Development, inaugurated in 2012, worked specifically on these themes. A movement is underway. It's a movement which has grown throughout the United Nations decade and we need to step up the pace in order to help governments in view of the deadlines and meetings which approach in 2012. The adoption of a new global agenda for sustainable development beyond 2015. The COP21 conference on climate, which will take place next year in Paris, and in which UNESCO is an active partner. And the World Conference this year, which will, here, Nagoya, which will pave the way towards the Global Forum on Education, which will take place in 
in Chiron in the Republic of Korea in 2015 and which will act as a springboard towards tomorrow's future education. There we have it, ladies and gentlemen, the challenges for the Global Programme for Education on Sustainable Development. That is to say, creating education adapted to the 21st century's challenges, which responds to the needs of civil society. It is a fundamentally humanistic project, and in order to succeed, we need to count on the support of all partners, the se private sector and governments and the presence of so many ministers, experts, youth and youth leaders is a sign of unity, a sign of encouragement and I would also say a call to action. I thank you for your attention. Thank you, uh, Madame Bakova. You couldn't have summed it up more clearly the slogan, um, as Madame Makova said, the culmination of a journey, but the beginning of a new one, and one where the stakes are high. That was uh, giving us some context, I think, uh, and reaffirming the importance of the next two days. Now, and uh, once again, please remain seated. Uh, I'd like to call on His Imperial Highness, the Crown Prince, to the lectern. Your Royal Highness, Princess Lara Hasna, ladies and gentlemen, I am greatly pleased that the UNESCO World Conference on Education for Sustainable Development is being held together with so many participants from nations all over the world. On our Earth Day, Earth Today, along with economic growth, and increasing populations, we are also witnessing the advancing change of climate, loss of biodiversity, depletion of natural resources, increases in poverty, and other problems. For our children and theirs, we have three important tasks. Protecting the Earth environment, which is the wellspring for ensuring lives abundant with blessings, treasuring the Earth's limited resources, and achieving sustainable development. In order to accomplish this, we humankind must do our utmost by pooling our knowledge and wisdom and unifying our capabilities. Under these circumstances, the United Nations Conference on Sustainable Development was held in Rio de Janeiro in June 2012, 20 years after the 1992 Rio Summit. The 188 participating countries at the conference adopted a declaration titled, The Future We Want. It presents a challenge to each and every one of us to decide what actions we should take to ensure the sustainable future that we want. In order to achieve sustainable development, each of us must recognize that we exist relative to all the other people in the world and to future generations as well as to our own natural environment. And we must consider the various global problems with a deepened international perspective. I feel certain that education is the basis for this. I believe that during these last 10 years 
of the United Nations Decade of Education for Sustainable Development. People around the world have been engaged in the ESD in various ways. It is very significant that in this last year of the decade of the ESD, the UNESCO World Conference on the ESD is being held in Nagoya here in Japan, which originally proposed the idea of the decade of the ESD. In addition, I am told that preceding this world conference on the ESD, high school students and other young people from around the world gathered in the city of Okayama for earnest and lively discussions on the ESD. We have the highest expectations that these and other young people will support the future of the Earth as leaders for realizing sustainable societies. Lastly, I would like to pay my profound respect to all of the organizers for their efforts in holding this World Conference on the ESD. I wish to express my sincere hope that active discussions on advancing the ESD will be held at this conference and that concrete effort in the field of education will be further advanced as a result for the building of sustainable societies in the future. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, Crown Prince. Wise words, uh, especially about each one of us taking personal responsibility for sustainability. Let's hear now from Mr. Hakabum Shimamura, the Minister of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology. Uh, Minister, the lectern's yours. Great honor today with the honorable attendance of His Imperial Highness the Crown Prince and Princess and Her Royal Highness Hasna. And I am very pleased to see so many participants at this UNESCO World Conference on Education for Sustainable Development. On behalf of the organizers as Minister of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology of Japan, I would like to welcome you and thank you for coming to this very important event. As you may know, the UN decade of ESD had its origins as a 2002 Johannesburg summit. As a summit, then Japanese Prime Minister Junichiro Koizumi proposed the idea of the ESD. A resolution for the decade of ESD was adopted as the 57 UN General Assembly. Since then, Japan has been promoting ESD internationally through our support to UNESCO. I am delighted to say that ESD is now taking root around the world. ESD is also being actively promoted in Japan. 
we have included the concept of ESD in the government basic plan for the promotion of education and it makes curriculum guidelines for schools. Moreover, in Japan, there are 807 UNESCO associated schools, the largest number in the world. These schools are the focal point for various ESD activities held at the local level. We are now facing many global programs. In September this year, the UN Climate Summit was held. At the summit, the political will of nations to build new frameworks to fight climate change was confirmed. In other words, strong momentum has been built around the world to overcome the problem in Japan. We are making many efforts to reflect our concern for global environment. One example is Japan's world reading commercial production of whole sale cars. Within this context, I believe we must work to further promote ESD with the spirit of making a fresh new start. In addition, for Japan, 2020 will be the year we host the Tokyo Olympics and the Paralympics. The Olympics will help shape the future direction Japan will take. Indeed, I believe 2020 will be a big turning point for Japan. We will show the greatest concern for the environment in staging these Olympics. I want to encourage young people to have the confidence to take positive action to solve global issues, beginning with environmental programs. I believe that ESD will be a key perspective for this. I can say with pride that Japan is one of the countries making the most positive effort for ESD. We want to continue to enhance and expand this effort in Japan, as well as contribute to the promotion of ESD throughout the international community. I would here like to announce a new initiative by Japan. We have proposed to establish a new award called the UNESCO Japan ESD Award to comment outstanding effort for ESD around the world and this has been approved by the UNESCO Executive Board. We hope that this award will motivate ESD practitioners worldwide to break new ground in ESD. The preparations for the World Conference on ESD have been carried out under close cooperation among UNESCO, Aichi Prefecture, and the cities of Nagoya and Okayama. Various interesting cultural events have also been planned. I am sure that your time during the conference period will be well spent and worthwhile. Lastly, I accept that this conference will be very fruitful and I hope that the result will be shared widely in the international community and further advance ESD around the world. Thank you.
Minister, thank you very much indeed. Good news about the new initiative the Minister announced there, the uh, proposal to establish a new award, the UNESCO Japan ESD Award, to commend outstanding efforts for ESD around the world. Um, let's uh, move now to uh, our host here in Nagoya. So please welcome Mr. Hideaki Omura, the Governor of Aichi Prefecture. Of Morocco. Hi, Excellency Mizu Elina Bokoba, Director General of UNESCO. Ministers of UNESCO member states and all conference participants, welcome to Aichi Nagoya. In the presence of their Imperial Highness, the Crown Prince and Crown Princess, it's a great honor to host the UNESCO World Conference on Education for Sustainable Development here in Aichinawea. In 2005, we held a world exposition on the theme of nature's wisdom in the very year that the UN decade of ESD started. For the first time in the history of world expositions, it was themed on the environment and sent out a message to the rest of the world about how human beings should live in harmony with nature. In 2010, CBD COP10 was held here in this same venue, and the Aichi I Biodiversity Target was adopted as a global roadmap for preserving Preserving, preserving biodiversity from 2010 to 2020. To pass on these accomplishments to the future and achieve a sustainable society, we announced the invitation to this conference in 2011. And since then, a great many people have contributed to the preparations. ESD is important not only for solving global issues, but also building local communities. So the whole region is involved in ESD. In particular, we have focused on nurturing the people who will shoulder the next generation by expanding UNESCO-associated schools. These efforts in Aichi Nagoya deserve much attention. Aichi Nagoya has the largest accumulation of industries in Japan, especially in the automotive and aerospace industries. The region also has a thriving agricultural industry and is the largest producer of flowers in Japan. Today, we greeted you all with flowers grown here. This area is also known as the birthplace of Nobunaga, Hideyoshi, and Ieyasu, the three samurai heroes who unified Japan in the 16th century and has many historic sites such as Nagoya Castle. Nagoya Castle, at yesterday, yesterday's reception, many of you saw it, and national treasure Inuyama Castle as well as traditional cultures such as dashi festival floats and karakuri mechanical puppets. Introductions to the att attractions of Aichi Nagoya are on display in the event hall. In addition, we have planned excursions so that you can enjoy the attractions for yourselves. Also, a welcome reception will be held at this con Congress Center this evening. I hope you will enjoy our hospitality and you stay, stay with us here. To conclude, I would like to express my deep appreciation 
to all the representatives from UNESCO and the Japanese government who put so much time and effort into preparing for this conference. In closing, I offer my sincere wishes for the success of the conference and for the further progress of ESD in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Governor, and thank you for all the flowers. These must have been grown here, I know along the front. Say it with flowers, we had a slogan in Britain a long time ago, and uh, it's certainly done that today. It looked fabulous, and we look forward to the uh, reception tonight. Um, now it is time for the Imperial Highnesses to leave us, but once again, please remain seated. And although they are leaving the stage, uh, they are to stay with us uh, to follow some more of this morning's uh, proceedings. So. Um, I did mention at the beginning uh, the very wise words of Ban Ki-moon about impressing on us the urgency of finding a way to a sustainable future. Uh, and of course, we must also remember Kofi Annan's uh, words uh, when he said, our biggest challenge is to take an idea that seems abstract, and that idea is sustainable development, and turn it into a reality for the world's people because a lot of people don't understand sustainable development and how it refers to education in particular. Um, well now we're going to hear video messages from uh, first Ban Ki-moon, uh, Secretary General of the UN, and then Mr. Akim Steiner, who is Executive Director of uh, UNEP and Under Secretary General of the UN. So we'll watch the two video messages and then we'll come back for our keynote speaker. Your Imperial Highness, Crown Prince Naruhito, Your Royal Highness, Princess Lala Hasna, Your Excellency, Hakubun Shimomura, Minister of Education, Culture, Sports, science and technology, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, minasama yokoso, hello everyone and welcome. I thank Japan and UNESCO for organizing this important event. Sustainability is the only way that we can protect our precious planet today and tomorrow. There is no plan B because there is no planet B. Sustainability must be built into everything we do, and education is the starting point. Boys and girls must learn about global citizenship to prepare them for the responsibility of safeguarding our common future. The message is getting through. We saw that in the climate change marches that took place all over the world in September, and in the summit I organized in New York. This momentum must carry through to the conference of the parties 
to the Convention on Climate Change in Lima next month and in Paris next year. This World Conference is an important opportunity to look to the future to shape an ambitious global action program and to ensure that education figures prominently in the post-2015 Sustainable Development Agenda. I wish you great success. Thank you. Domo arigato gozaimashita. What you do is you give me a time okay. Okay. when... Thank you very much for the opportunity to join you on this very special occasion hosted by the Governor of Japan and UNESCO to celebrate the end of the UN Decade for Education on Sustainable Development. As part of the UN Interagency Committee on Education for Sustainable Development, the United Nations Environment Program has been a proud and active partner of this effort led by our colleagues in UNESCO and governments across the world and the United Nations system as a whole to put not only renewed emphasis and attention on the importance of education for sustainable development, but also to try and connect actors across the globe in trying to understand and learn lessons as to which approaches have worked, which ones are most likely to help us to bring the notion of sustainable development, but also the practical opportunities closer to where people make decisions every day. I recently read a short quote which said that when I was young I wanted to change the world. When I got wise I began to look at how I can change myself. I think this speaks to the full spectrum of what it is that we in the United Nations system with you as member states of the UN and many of our partners in the non-governmental sector and the private sector have been trying to achieve in this past decade. I would like to also say that as we move forward with the global program of action on education for sustainable development the work will continue. In that sense, the UN decade has been a foundation upon which to not only build new alliances and networks, but also to focus our attention within the UN system and also beyond that in every country across the world on the importance of education for sustainable development. As member states of the United Nations are in the process of negotiating a new set of sustainable development goals, the focus, the priorities and also the future perspective on sustainable development will inevitably require an enormous amount of emphasis and investment at the education end. Education is not only about knowledge, it's about empowerment, it's about giving people a means by which to act on that knowledge. And it is here that we in the United Nations Environment Program have sought to make our contributions work as part of the UN Decade on Education for Sustainable Development. Through the Global Universities Partnership on Education and Sustainability, we have brought together over 520 universities who now work together on both curricula and the rollout of educational offerings to university students across the world. It's a tremendously successful partnership that has not only helped universities but indeed has helped us in the UN family to try and connect more closely to where the state of knowledge but also the state and practice of teaching and of knowledge sharing is taking place. Equally, under the 10-year framework program for sustainable consumption and production, the United Nations Environment Program, in providing the secretariat to this 10 YFP, has tried to bring other aspects of action that connect both the global scientific and knowledge agenda to where people actually can make a difference. The Sustainable Lifestyles and Education Program that is part of the 10 YFP is a great example of how we are trying to connect an agenda that reaches from the behavioral change that is required from all of us as individuals through a better understanding of the technologies and management practices that allow us to achieve a lower footprint both at the consumption and at the production end of the equation of our economies. Just two examples of how in the context of UNEP's contribution to the UN Decade for Education on Sustainable Development has in many respects tried to provide a piece of the puzzle that is required in order for us to meet our mandate and also fulfill the mission of the UN Decade. I wish you all a very successful meeting in Japan, a country that has excelled and also pioneered many of the approaches that have to do with both a transition towards a low carbon economy, a more energy efficient and resource efficient economy, and where also the attention to understanding our natural environment, the conservation of biodiversity, has been part of a long journey that Japan has taken. It is thus a very appropriate country to host this particular moment in the UN Decade on Education for Sustainable Development, 
And we congratulate not only Japan, but all of you for having made this decade truly an experience of bringing together actors as never before around this theme. Please count on us in UNEP to continue to work with you, our colleagues in UNESCO, and the rest of the UN family, and member states and partners in the non-governmental and the private sector to not simply let the decade end now, but indeed to take actions forward. Thank you very much. Video messages from Ban Ki-moon and Achim Steiner. Um, it's now time for our keynote speech uh, this morning. Um, despite reaching the end of a decade for sustainable development, we still welcome ideas and solutions, and we're still also looking at the continued relevance of ESD. And to speak about that continued relevance is her Royal Highness, the Princess Lala Hasna of Morocco. So please give her a welcome. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala maulana rasulillah. Prayers to the Prophet, his family and his companions. Crown Prince Norito, Your Imperial Highness, Crown Princess Masako. Irina Bokova, Director General of UNESCO. His Excellency Habukun Shimura, Minister of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology of Japan. Mr. Hideaki Omura, the Governor of Aishi Prefecture. Honorable Ministers, ladies and gentlemen. It is with great interest and deep satisfaction that I take part in this World Conference co-organized by UNESCO and the Government of Japan. I would first like to pay tribute to the authorities of Japan for the warm welcome and excellent organization of this international event. I also wish to extend my sincere gratitude to the Director General of UNESCO for her invitation to me to take part in this meeting as a guest of honor. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a decisive moment when we can take stock of everything that we've learned, take stock of our achievements, learn from each other, and make sure that we make the most of this opportunity to promote education for sustainable development as a central, in inevitable dimension of global action for the protection of the environment and for human and sustainable development. The Mohammed VI Foundation for Environmental Protection shares this commitment to the spirit and values which underpin the United Nations Decade of Education for Sustainable Development. As soon as the foundation was set up by His Majesty King Mohammed VI in 2001, its action anticipated the values and principles which underpin this decade. Enjoying substantial autonomy in terms of means and action, the foundation which I have the honor to chair reflects, above all, a desire at the highest level of the state to put the citizen at the heart of the country's sustainable development strategy. In this respect, Morocco's new constitution refers explicitly to the right to sustainable development and to a healthy environment. It also recognizes the important role to be played by civil society and NGOs in raising public awareness and in promoting the citizens' participation in public affairs. Thinking and acting for the sake of the environment, in the broadest sense of the term, means being fully aware that the planet is not only a precious legacy, but that it also implies a tremendous responsibility for us in terms of preserving the interests of future generations. 
That is why present and future generations are the main focus of the Mohammed VI Foundation. It's for them and through them that we seek to raise awareness and educate people on the values and conduct which is conducive to sustainable development. The Foundation acts first at the level of primary schools and consistent with its usual approach in partnership with the Ministry of Education and bringing together teachers and educators organizations, elected officials, local NGOs, and economic agents. The Foundation seeks the emergence of a new eco-friendly generation that believes wholeheartedly in the values of sustainable development. In secondary schools, the Foundation seeks to stimulate young people's curiosity and interest by making them aware of their individual and collective responsibilities vis-à-vis -vis the environment. Our Foundation is also currently involved in setting up an education center for sustainable development to serve as a center for resources and skills development. We see the media as a key actor and partner we are also particularly interested in the various forms of awareness raising and mobilization provided by the new information technologies and social networks. Thanks to the change in scale and the massive impact our campaigns can have. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the main challenges in the area of education for sustainable development is that of pertinence and efficacy in the field. We want our efforts to be more than mere words, which sometimes have no tangible effect, however sincere they may be. Explaining what we do is not enough. We must lead by example in the field, in a coherent manner. And to that end, we need an active pedagog pedagogical approach. In this process of learning through example, major national projects can have a positive ripple effect. This is clearly shown by the ambitious Moroccan solar project, which is the largest in the world. This has aroused young school children's and students' interest in clean technologies, and it leads to innovation contests at schools, solar car races, and other similar praiseworthy initiatives. Educating and taking action. These are the two guiding principles that go hand in hand with all of the Foundation's programs. And it's on this basis that the Foundation rallies all segments of society to support concrete local objectives that have a direct impact on the citizens as well as an important educational dimension. Indeed, the Foundation's motto is the environment is everyone's concern. Whether with regard to the Clean Beaches Initiative, Morocco has approximately 3,600 kilometers of coastline, or the plan to protect the Marrakesh palm grove, or the rehabilitation of the kingdom's historic parks and gardens, or the improvement of air quality, our approach is always explained in a practical, concrete way with special emphasis on how the degradation of our natural heritage occurs and how to preserve it. Thus, during the preparation of the National Report for the Rio Plus 20 Conference in 2012, the Foundation took the initiative of organizing a forum on responsible consumption modes. This provided an opportunity for a group of high school students to compare their ideas with those of officials, civil society actors, and media representatives, enabling them to put forward many pertinent, pertinent practical recommendations. We decided to repeat the exercise the following year on the occasion of the 7th World Environment Education Congress, which was held in Marrakesh in 2013. There, young high school students were involved as citizen journalists. Lastly, I wish to mention the importance and the role of religious education, which should not be excluded from our collective efforts. On the contrary, 
it should be included because it helps muster the symbolic resources of a nation's intangible heritage. For example, to raise public awareness as to the rational use of water resources. This is an essential element which should not be overlooked in education for sustainable development. Ladies and gentlemen, much remains to be done in the area of education for sustainable development. Each one of us, according to our means or status, is called upon to make a contribution, however modest, and to show perseverance as part of a consistent overall strategy. Working towards the development of this consistent strategy and marshalling the means required for success constitute the dual challenge we shall be facing in the coming decade as new goals are proposed under the United Nations post-2015 agenda. I should like to commend UNESCO's leadership here in the area of education for sustainable development and to con congratulate all the stakeholders on the proposed platforms for action. The ethical requirement for consistent action applies to all of us in the North as well as in the South, at country level as well as in international fora. It is just as necessary as the requirement of pertinence and effect effectiveness, which are sometimes lacking in many initiatives despite the goodwill of the people involved. Education for sustainable development is both a challenging tax task and a long struggle since it focuses on attitudes, mindsets, and tries to change reflexive behavior in our societies. As such, it is a task that calls for sustained cross-generational momentum in order to fulfill the ambition of seeing the emergence of informed, committed global citizens who are responsible for their own future. Thank you very much. May the peace of God be upon you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Her Royal Highness, for that uh, keynote speech, and we certainly applaud the Foundation seeking the emergence of a new eco-friendly generation that believes wholeheartedly in the values of sustainable uh, development. Um, let's move on to celebrate the decade of ESD and mark the launch of the final report uh, of the decade. So please welcome Mr. Kian Tang. Uh, Kian Tang is the Assistant Director General of UNESCO for Education. Mr. Tang, if you'd like to come to the lectern. Their Imperial Highnesses, the Crown Prince of Japan and the Crown Princess. Your Royal Highness, Princess Lala Asna of Morocco. Your Excellency, Minister of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology of Japan. Excellencies, Ministers, ladies and gentlemen. We gather here today at the end of the UN Decade of Education for Sustainable Development. For 10 years, Stakeholders across the world have made strong efforts to integrate sustainable development into education and learning so that everyone may possess the knowledge, skills, and the values that are necessary to contribute to sustainable development. As we celebrate the achievement of the decade, I'm delighted and honored to launch here today the final report on the UN decade, shaping the future we want. The final report, which is made available today in print and electronic copies, provides a review of the implementation and outcome of the decade at all levels 
and areas of education, from early childhood care and education to primary and secondary, technical and vocational education and training, to higher education and non-formal education. A number of tools were used in the preparation of the report. Member states and other stakeholders have contributed extensively to the data collection process through response to UNESCO's monitoring and evaluation questionnaires and participation in consultations UNESCO held in 2013 in all world regions. A number of background papers were commissioned to enhance the information generated from the questionnaires and the regional consultations. UNESCO conducted a review of documents produced throughout the decade, as well as of studies and reports produced by others. Finally, an extensive peer review process took place for both the commission of background papers and the text of the final report. We are grateful to all people who have contributed to this process. There are two major conclusions of this report. The first one is that clear demonstrable process has progress has been made over the course of the decade. ESD has been embedded in education and sustainable development policies in curricula at all levels in education and in approaches to learning. ESD frameworks and tools has been tested, partnerships and a network has been established, and the capacity to deliver ESD has been developed. The progress has been achieved through 10 years of dedication from all of you here today, as well as well from many other actors who have laid a strong foundation to advance sustainable development through education and learning. The second conclusion is that although the outcomes of the decades are promising, there is much more work to be done. We need to scale up our efforts. This will require strong leadership, one of the most important factors for success identified during the decade. More specifically, the report recognized 10 key findings after 10 years of action and outlines a number of challenges yet to be addressed. These findings will be, will be presented to you in a short film in a moment. The findings from this report will be the basis for the work that has to follow the scaling up of our actions in ESD over the coming years under the Global Action Program, which member states in the UNESCO General Conference endorsed as the follow-up to the UN decade. The Global Action Program will continue to pursue the goals of the decade and it will aim to overcome the challenges identified in the final report. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it's clear that we need a more equitable, peaceful, and environmentally sound world today and for future generations. The best way to achieve this is to empower people to act in different ways and with responsibilities. And education is crucial for this empowerment. Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, may I now turn your attention to our short film with the 10 key findings of the final report of the UN decade, shaping the future we want. Through the United Nations Decade of Education for Sustainable Development, member states have committed to integrate sustainable development into education systems. The following key findings are based on evidence emerging from 10 years' work around the world. 1. Education systems are addressing sustainability issues. Across many countries, a strong trend can now be seen to make education more relevant to the social, 
environmental and economic challenges that the world faces today and in the future. 2. Sustainable development agendas and education agendas are converging. Stakeholders for sustainable development are increasingly taking up education, public awareness and training to advance sustainable development. 3. Political leadership has proven instrumental. Political leadership has helped to create the organizational climate necessary for change. As a result, important advances have been made to put national ESD strategies or plans in place, contributing to the integration of ESD into national education and sustainable development policies. 4. Multi-stakeholder partnerships are particularly effective. The UN Decade has helped to reinforce the importance of partnerships and collaboration among stakeholders. Interactions among the growing networks of universities investing in ESD in Africa, Latin America and elsewhere have led to international commitments and peer support for ESD. Five, local commitments are growing. The implementation of ESD now includes unique features that relate to the local context. 6. Whole institution approaches practice ESD. Whole institution approaches are increasing and are helping learners to contribute to sustainable development in their schools or institutions, communities and workplaces. 7. ESD facilitates interactive learner-driven pedagogies. Participatory learning processes, critical thinking, and problem-based learning are proving particularly conducive to ESD. Educators at all levels are central to this. 8. ESD is being integrated into formal education. There is growing recognition among policymakers that early childhood care and education is the foundation of sustainable development. In primary and secondary education, Evidence of increasing policy attention to and integration of ESD is especially strong. The last 10 years have also seen higher education stepping up its efforts towards sustainable development. 9. Non-formal and informal ESD is increasing. In the daily lives of communities, families and individuals, awareness of environment and sustainable development issues is reported to have improved in many countries. 10. Technical and vocational education and training advances sustainable development. International sustainable development policy and planning and technical and vocational education and training policy and planning are now aligning in the green economy and green skills agenda leading to new research and capacity building efforts. Despite the successes of the Decade of Education for Sustainable Development, challenges remain in realizing the full potential of ESD. These include the need for further alignment of education and sustainable development sectors, the need to do more work for institutionalizing ESD, and finally, the need for more research, innovation, monitoring and evaluation. The United Nations decade has left a deep mark. It has not only raised awareness, but catalyzed innovation across the board, from national education strategies to classroom practices, through to university curricula and community and business engagement. And this is what we must now build on. While there are challenges ahead, the solid foundation developed during the UN decade to support an exciting range of global to local responses to help sustain momentum on ESD into the future. Well, thank you Mr. Tang uh, and uh, the makers of that excellent uh, video. Um, the ten key findings are absolutely vital to take us forward. What we're doing, as I think has already been indicated by Madame Bakova, is really taking a good stock check at this time, finding out what has been achieved, as well as celebrating a decade's achievements. So let's bring on our speakers for the uh, panel discussion on achievements uh, and challenges of DESD. 
Um, and if the panel can come up to the stage, uh, the panel consists of Madame Bakova, who is, you know, DG of UNESCO, um, Mr. Matsi Angelina Mochiga, Minister of Basic Education of South Africa, a country committed to ESD. Susan Hopgood, who is President of Education International, and uh, that represents, that organization represents organizations of teachers uh, all around the world, and the Federal Secretary of the Australian Education Union as well. And uh, our next panelist is Tariq Al Alaini from Bahrain. Welcome, Tariq. He's one of the 52 young people who were selected out of 5,000 applicants to attend the UNESCO Youth Conference in Okiyama. So, tremendously strong uh, panel. Um, and uh, thank you all for coming uh, today. Uh, I think. Um, we have to address the first question to um, Irina Bokova, who has already issued uh, this morning a call to action, I think, uh, Madam Director General. So, first question to you, what do you see as the key achievements and successes of the UN Decade of ESD? Um, I think that uh, the uh, report that we uh, just uh, presented uh, takes stock and uh, has indicated uh, the ten uh, most important findings uh, during this decade. Let me just mention that um, the decade gave us incredible possibility to establish partnerships, uh, to leverage uh, uh, the uh, potential of uh, different international organizations. We just heard the Secretary General, the United Nations system as a whole was mobilized and um, my colleague uh, Him Steiner from UNEP, uh, we have here uh, also uh, Education International, uh, later Susan will, will talk about that, the biggest uh, 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 association of, uh, of um, teachers um, and uh, I think uh, one of the main findings uh, of course uh, was the uh, innovative way of looking at, uh, at education systems of changing curricula of uh, giving more, more training and uh, I have here many examples about uh, uh, let's say Finland who have uh, changed their curriculum, introduced education, the notion of sustainability. Uh, we know in uh, Canada there were uh, hundreds of uh, thousands of schools uh, have, who have been involved uh, uh, in this system. Uh, we have seen as mentioned in Morocco also a very interesting example of uh, introducing uh, in the national curricula training of teachers. Uh, I think the tremendous uh, mobilization, world mobilization, around uh, putting the dots between education, sustainability, uh, the three uh, main uh, legs of uh, sustainability, which are the social, uh, environmental, uh, uh, it's, uh, and, and economic, is critical. And this is where the uh, main outcome of this uh, uh, decade is so important. And just before I put the same question to you, Minister, um, were there failures too? Sorry? Were there failures too? And we talked about well, achievements? Yeah, you know, I think I wouldn't call them failures. I would call them challenges, definitely. There are still many challenges, and that's why uh, we are having the Global Action Plan. I think one of the biggest uh, challenges still continues uh, uh, to be the very strong link between sustainable development policies and education policies. And I'm sure that the minister will speak about that, and many ministers of education in this hall know this, uh, uh, this challenge. Albeit, uh, I think the, um, there is a lot of evolution, there is a lot of uh, positive examples still, uh, we are, I would say, at the beginning of this uh, uh, important path. The second, which was also in the report, and it's important, is to, Im to embed, to institutionalize uh, education for sustainable development very deeply. Uh, into uh, education system is all its varieties. Uh, uh, talking about um, uh, primary schooling, talking about uh, uh, universities, talking about um, early childhood care, about technical vocational training. It's a wide array, I would say, of um, responsibilities that one education system has. And the third, which is uh, in fact a challenge for all of the sustainability 
uh, development agenda post-2015, but particularly about education for sustainable development is about monitoring and evaluation. Still, we don't see uh, very many uh, reporting or ways of, uh, uh, I would say, measurable and criteria of how to monitor and evaluate uh, uh, all these achievements. Um, and uh, we speak about uh, data revolution, we speak about the necessity of uh, having a very clear understanding notion, data, of uh, what is happening in the different countries at a national, regional, and global mm -hmm. level. Uh, and I think we still have to uh, think of how we evaluate and measure the uh, advancement. It's, it's critical if we want to advance. Evaluation must be very difficult because you're breaking new ground continually. Um, but Minister, um, same question to you. How would you, um, how would you see, if you like, the key successes, the achievements of the past decade? Uh, I think that should be controlled remotely, so you should be all right. Just. That's it. Quite strange that the report coincides with what we really see are the, pro the progress that we've made in the past 10 years, mainly integrating sustainable development, understanding to the, into the curriculum, making it the principles of the curriculum, and ensuring that the current generation, especially the young generation, understands and appreciates their responsibility to future generations about handing over the world better than they receive it, but also protecting it because it belongs to them. So to give that sense of ownership to our kids about the world and the responsibility of keeping it for future generations. But really also moving beyond environmental educational awareness to sustainable development as a principle and as a concept. So really it's around policy, it's around awareness, and developing a young cadre of young people who are conscious, who form networks, who sometimes make us very uncomfortable as governments to take us on when there are environmental infringements. And that's been a greater success in a sense that uh, we have these young people who are young activists around mm -hmm. sustainable development and really make you sometimes very uncomfortable as, as, as government when you have to do <laughs> developments and really uh, being true to what you, you preach. So it's been very helpful in that sense. Well, it, it, I think Princess Halla mentioned this, the foundation's work with young people, trying to produce that uh, eco-friendly generation. Uh, so it's, it's a message that is going out there. Um, Susan Hopgood, same to you. Um, key achievements and successes of the decade? Well, I think, the, I think there's no doubt that um, uh, the, the decade uh, has been successful in raising um, uh, global awareness and... Um, and change in relation to education for sustainable development. And there's many examples of that. The decision of the um, UN member states at the Rio Plus 20, uh, the Rio Plus 20 conference um, to promote education for sustainable development. Uh, most definitely the um, fact that uh, sustainable education for sustainable development has been included in the open working group recommendations in relation to the post-2015 um, uh, goals and also the uh, uh, UNESCO's um, uh, Muscat Agreement. Um, and also I think another example is the fact that the um, UN Secretary General um, uh, has included uh, global education, uh, global citizenship education as one of the, the core components of the uh, Global Education First Initiative. So it shows that there is a move, uh, I think, um, globally. This, of course, is having a, an important impact on, on governments and education systems. And for us, e Education International, we've been promoting uh, a sort of a bold and broader um, uh, vision of education around uh, quality education for all, which is based on uh, quality teaching, uh, quality tools, and most definitely quality environments. And we think that um, you know, the decade has helped us promote that notion uh, of, of quality. And if you go to schools, what we know is that uh, teachers right around the globe are um, investing in education for sustainable development and including it in their, in their work, that um, uh, certainly education departments and governments are looking to include this um, in 
uh, in national curriculum. So there's much, there's much, many gains. Yes. And you, you're finding the message is an easy message to sell, I suspect, in schools to young people. Uh, yeah, the message is, a, is an easy message because young people actually understand uh, the importance of a sustainable development and that uh, we must work towards uh, a peaceful and uh, sustainable world. I think young people actually under, understand this instinctively. Uh, and teachers, I think, instinctively want to work with young people and communities to, to bring this about. Because they can recognise the enthusiasm. Because uh, absolutely they can recognise enthusiasm. Right. But if you would, do you want me to talk about what I see as the challenges in respect to that at the same um, time? In a moment. I'll come back to I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll put a quick question because I want to hear from Tariq, because Tariq is a young man in 5,000. So therefore, I, I really want to hear what he has to say about what you think uh, of the last 10 years. Um, well, we just completed the ESD Youth Conference um, on Saturday, and it brought together really 52 incredible human beings um, who are already working on our leaders in ESD issues. Um, and just to give a little perspective on, on the UN decade, actually in 2005 when it was introduced, um, of those 52, um, at the time the youngest was nine um, and the oldest was 24. Um, which is really interesting to think about because actually for most of us we received very little formal sustainability education um, and training and in fact our classrooms were these emerging sustainability youth movements um, and our teachers were each other. Um, indeed we had this sort of intrinsic connection, we went forward with it and I think it's the strength of that youth movement that's actually one of the strongest um, and biggest achievements and it's the ripening of that collective and we see that there are ESD um, leaders in, in youth, particularly in the informal education sphere um, and there's a recognition that it's time to actually move on and start to scale our impact. Okay, and I'll, I'm going to put that question and come back uh, along uh, the line in a moment. But just very quickly, the, staying with you, Tarek, to take this forward and how you see the main challenges now, the barriers to the future development. Um, well, I'd say whilst young people are committed to lead, um, we can't do it alone. Um, we really need to do it together. And I think there is a feeling amongst many youth in the space that there is um, still a lack of institutional recognition um, and support as equal partners, um, and I emphasize equal partners in a way that truly matters to exist. What do you mean, equal partners? Um, well, we get a lot of, uh, and a lot of people who have come to speak to us say that we're the leaders of tomorrow, um, but in fact we need intergenerational cooperation. Um, it's not the fact that um, um, we are going to be, uh, again, leading on our own. Um, we really need to work together. Um, but in many cases, when we go into a policy space, for example, we're not afforded that equal grounding and that equal standing. Um, and we've seen that time and time and time again. Okay. Uh, and Susan Hopgood, you started to say about what you think are the yeah, challenges. Yes, but if I could just continue. Yeah. I think that um, uh, you know, intergenerational working together is so important because what we have seen, the programs that work extremely well are programs which are um, programs, institutional programs, which are actually about, for example, school communities, actually about teachers working with students, working with parents, working with school leadership. That's when, that's when they work, actually. But what are the challenges? Well, uh, I think, look, we would see one of the big challenges is that, um, unfortunately, um, uh, many governments promote a very narrow education agenda. Uh, and this, in actual fact, works completely against the notion of education for sustainable development. Uh, if uh, ESD is seen as a bolt-on to the curriculum, uh, if there is a, a narrow focus um, uh, of education which promotes competition, for example, uh, you know, testing league tables, what this does is take away from uh, the capacity of teachers to build into, uh, into a broad education, a quality education, the notion of education for sustainable development. And secondly, um, a, a big challenge is um, to build the capacity of teachers. Um, and educators more broadly um, uh, to be able to confidently um, uh, involve themselves in education for sustainable development. Not only environment, environmental teachers, it's not just a, a certain group of teachers, but what we need is all teachers to be able to integrate uh, educate ESD into their work and to be able to do that they need good uh, uh, professional learning, they need ongoing professional development and some of our research shows that this is where teachers uh, feel, uh, feel lacking that uh, you know a study that we've done of French speaking in French speaking teacher unions for example shows that teachers want to do this uh, but they feel that they lack the capacity because they haven't had the training so that's a, a huge challenge for us 
uh, educators are at the core, at the centre of, 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 of this um, uh, of this issue, but we must actually provide them with that, the that's skills. That's surmountable, uh, the training issue? Okay. Um, yep, Madam is. Director, do you want to add? You started to talk about, um, because I asked you about the, the failures or the challenges, the barriers. Do you want to add any more to what you see as the challenges for the next I, I would like first uh, to say that I did attend also the uh, youth uh, forum uh, the other day and then uh, yesterday I engaged in uh, uh, some discussions with young people and I think uh, what our young friend said was very important and uh, I do believe uh, indeed we say very often you are the leaders of tomorrow and um, I think uh, in the sustainability, in the sustainable development and when we speak about uh, education for sustainable development, the important thing and the great thing is that uh, there is so much need of civic engagement. Uh, there is so much need of something else that the, as we say, formal way of, of teaching. And that is why my message also was that uh, don't wait for somebody else to tell you what to do and how to do it. You can start doing it today because it's about, uh, uh, and we insist strongly in that, uh, sustainability is not about only having uh, green economies, but green societies. And green societies are made both by governments, of course by the private sector, because it's, uh, it's part of uh, their responsibility towards the green economies, but by the civil society. And I believe young generation is particularly sensitive towards the issues of environment. Yeah. Uh, and we saw it here also at the beginning, uh, towards living together, a tolerance of understanding about the others, um, about the future. And here where the intergenerational uh, dialogue, uh, cooperation, interaction is critical, I think, when we speak about sustainable development. So it could be the, the, the pupils leading the teachers. Well, I think it's uh, so many good initiatives and innovation comes from young people. I'm mm. sure that teachers, as um, Susan said, are receptive uh, to this exchange. It's not the classical, traditional, we tell you what to do. I think we all think about the future, about how we live together, about the planet, environment, biodiversity, climate change, you name it. This new type of global citizenship that we want to promote in the world. It's a new concept we're, we're launching. And without the very active participation of young people, I don't think we will achieve it. No, you won't, exactly. Minister, um, uh, your view, how you see the possible barriers or uh, what the challenges will be next? No, the current challenges include an enlightened younger generation with, with the older generation being left behind. So. What you teach in schools is not reinforced in, the, in society. So there is a need to strengthen education even with civic society, uh, civil society so that you can reinforce what you teach and what they find at home. So there is a gap. You do find a young cadre of, of activists around environmental awareness or, or, or education, but you find a population which is not that environmentally aware so, and conscious. So how do you do that? How do you bridge that gap? I think, as I say, what needs to be done is to reinforce the messaging because it's easier to take it with the young people. As we say in the country, it's really saying to them, this is your future, don't allow it to be destroyed because we have a responsibility to take it forward better. So with young people that are enthusiastic, there's very little to lose because there are no economic uh, uh, co uh, competitions that they have as young people. So they go there with a clear conscience. Then you, for me, you have to reinforce more around really having civic, educa civil ed civic education also being strengthened to do that. But more important also, it's to make it mainstream in the country. You know, when I was preparing for, 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 for this meeting here, yes, indeed, we've put it in the curriculum, we've put it as policy, but sitting here, I am not sure where the gaps are, so which means it's not part of our formal evaluation, so we have not developed tools to monitor systematically our progress, where the gaps are, and in a way that is structured and sustainable. There are no budgets like in some of the big issues. I mean, in the country, we had a big scale of AIDS, so there is an AIDS budget. It's a national program. It's coordinated across government. Sustainable education is our business as education. Environmental department does its own work in terms of just keeping the environment. So there's no coordination nationally. There's no national movement. 
it is confined in schools. We might be making progress in schools, okay. but we've not also integrated it completely also in the work that we do in schools, especially the monitoring and the evaluations. That is a very strong point. Tarek, uh, Minister, making the point that it seems to be going quite well in schools, but it's not quite mainstream yet. Um, well, in terms of, again, mainstream, um, it also depends on how we're approaching education. Um, in the youth in the youth space, most of our education has actually been, and when I say mainstream, um, outside of the schools, um, of course. And um, I also think as well to foster that and to actually scale that, um, there does need to be greater institutional support um, across the board. And that's not just in schools, it's across businesses, it's across governments. Um, and for example, with the government's um, sort of a point that came up with a few of the youth delegates here was actually very few have ever had contact with their government delegations. Um, and I think that just, and it's for many different reasons, of course, um, but I think actually trying to bridge, um, you know, those gaps in terms of cooperation and can help scale that impact, not just really only in schools, but across, again, the board, because you do need a holistic approach. I, I think the last word must go to uh, Madam Bakova. Um, how do you see the future of ESD? And what are your commitments to take ESD forward? Well, I think um, we are gathered here today to design uh, an important agenda for the future of education for sustainable development, uh, once again to uh, endorse the global action plan adopted by the General Conference of UNESCO last year with the very concrete uh, ideas of action on the uh, national, uh, regional, and global level. I think uh, what is very important, uh, it is happening already, uh, we have integrated education for sustainable development as one of the targets of the future sustainable uh, educational goal within the post-2015 agenda. It has been uh, included already in the initiative of the Secretary General, Education First, that UNESCO is steering forward uh, with a strong emphasis on global citizenship. And I think uh, developing this uh, future uh, concept, notion of global citizenship that uh, embodies also education for sustainable development is extremely important for the uh, global sustainability agenda. We will not have, I believe, uh, green societies. We will not achieve whatever wonderful agreement uh, governments make, hopefully, uh, going through Lima next year uh, in COP21 in Paris unless we change our man's mindset, unless we change our mentality, the way we live, the way we consume, the way we produce, the way we live together. Uh, I think this is a critical, uh, uh, I would say, target uh, uh, in the global sustainability agenda that we all are here gathered in order to endorse. So our responsibility at this conference and the importance of this conference, I think, is huge for humanity. Indeed, that was really constructive. Uh, we will be looking beyond the decade of ESD in a moment, but in the meantime, thank you, Madam Bakova, Minister Mocheka, uh, Susan Hopgood, and uh, Tarek Olaleni. Thank you all. My, th my thanks also to um, their Imperial Highnesses, uh, the Crown Prince and Crown Princess. Please remain seated as they make their leave. Uh, and we are very grateful that they spent so much time with us uh, this morning for what has been a very constructive session so far. Thank you very much. And now, um, we are going to move on uh, with a cultural interlude to mark a third session. Um, coming up next, I'm just going to check that she is ready, so bear with me for just a few seconds. <laughs>